everybody, this is Elissa from Mink Arts and Crafts, and today we have probably one of my favorite all-time videos to watch. You guys love, I know, watching the month in reviews and doing the month in reviews. Well, today we have the year in review. As you can see, we've got a lot of canvases here all stacked up. I didn't want to have to splice everything together, so we're just going to go right down through. Uh, I also was like, mm, I don't know if I want to put these in order. If you guys want to see the proper order that these canvases go in, you can go back and watch my playlist of month and reviews. So we're going to kind of go through these canvases. Some of them are going to be ones that I don't count as like my finishes for my totals for the year. Uh, I do weird Alyssa math. So like my paint gems, I've finished eight paint gem sets this year, but I don't count them towards my total. I know it's weird. They, they're their own category. So, uh, like, I have my iPad over here to the side with my Gems Flow. I normally keep it on my phone, but uh, I just, I'm obviously recording with my phone, so I can't. So, I keep my categories of completed. And you can see, as I scroll down, I have a separate subset of uh, that I have categorized as A, which is all of my paint gems right there. And then my minis have their own category. And special projects have their own category. And cross-stitch conversions have now started their own category. Now they've started doing, like, little, little mini cross-stitch conversion projects. So we're going to kind of get into this. So we're going to kind of get a little bit of like the overall completion stats for you guys first. I wrote on a little sticky note, well, piece of paper first. Some of the basic completion stats of kind of the breakdown of things. Uh, I consider my overall completions as 47 kits. You're going to see more than that here because uh, like the paint gems don't count in these little mini conversion or little mini sets we're going to look at real quickly don't count because like I said, we are to list the math. So actual kits that we're gonna look at are 47 plus the extras. So my completions for the year were 47 kits, plus eight paint gems, plus five little mini kits. Uh, I also did eight special projects, uh, which could be coasters, ornaments, like the Diamond Art Club uh, card sets, and all of those different things. Those are all what I call consider the special projects. And I did three small little cross-stitch conversion projects in December. So I started like a new category in my gems flow for those so I could keep track of those. As the breakdown of my uh, actual completions for kits, I did seven squares and, you know, eight paint gem sets because the paint gems are squares as well, but seven actual square canvases and 40 rounds. So that's kind of the breakdown. You can tell I love my rounds. Um, I have gotten more comfortable with the squares now that Diamond Art Club has come out with their new multi-placers. I actually still prefer the thin uh, stainless steel multi-placer for my, um, like, I, I still prefer, like, when I'm diamond painting, I'll still have, like, two pens pulled out, and I'll have, like, one with the Diamond Art Club multi-placer on it and one with, like, the the thin stainless steel multi-placer that you can find on AliExpress or elsewhere. Um, this one I'll use for squares and this one I'll use for rounds. And that's just me. I found that this works better for me with rounds and this works like life-changing for me with squares. And I have gotten so much more comfortable with squares over these last couple months since this particular multi-placer came out. Look at those beautiful pens. Gorgeous. All right. So we're going to kind of get into this because this is probably going to be a long video. I'm not going to try to go deep into any details on these kits just because you can watch my month in reviews for the details on it. We're going to kind of flip through, show you all of these. This is the first paint gym set that I did. This is the rainbows set and there are, I believe, 16 of this one and overall loved this. This was, like I said, this was my first set that I did from them and you can kind of see this is how I have them set up to display. Uh, I'm still kind of trying to find the perfect solution for storing and displaying all of these paint gem sets. Uh, I think out of this entire set of paint gems for the rainbows, uh, that is my favorite one of the little paint gem rainbows. Uh, this is just in like a little cheap book that I picked up off of Amazon for, I think this one's set for like four by sixes, but that was number one of the paint gems. Number two and three for the paint gems, I are the National Parks one and two. These fit in these great little, like, um, three, I think they're like a, what a size is this? Oh, I think it's like a, yeah, this is, well, those are a five by seven. This is a four by six. 
So this I picked up off of Timu. I picked up a bunch of these off of Timu. And I'll probably end up cutting down those other ones to fit into these. Because these I feel like are a nicer quality. So this you have National Parks 1 and 2. So this is all National Parks. And I have these every other page. So there's a blank page in between. I haven't gotten around to like pulling them out. So these are all. I'm not going to go through the details of like the name of each park. Because that would take too long. But you can see here. Uh, we've got our first national parks set and there were 10 in each of these national parks. Um, so there's national parks set number one. I call it national parks 1.0 and now we'll roll into national parks 2.0. So here you go. I love, uh, and these are like the first actual like squares that I really worked on, uh, are these. And I love the look of the square. It just takes me a lot longer to work on squares. I love the bling on this one. Uh, one of the things I would love to see is Paint Gem starting to add any kind of like specials. I think that would look fantastic to add some specials because this Aurora Borealis here would look so, so spectacular with some actual ABs in it. I do plan on adding, starting to add some bling to my um, Paint Gems now. Uh, now that I feel like I'm a little bit more comfortable with some squares. So that's on my to-do list moving forward is starting to add some bling to them. So that was Paint Gem 2 and 3. Next up, we have my next one that I did were the Around the World 1 and the Around the World 2. So I put these in. This one I liked. I really wanted the gray, and I really wanted this to work, but because it's hardcover, you can only put so many in here before the case starts to get too full. Uh, love the Taj Mahal, Stonehenge. I've been to, my goal is to be able to visit like all the places I have been here. Uh, I have actually climbed and hiked to the top of Mount Fuji, um, Eiffel Tower. Uh, so this is something that's on my list of places to actually, or the things to do is to visit all of these locations. So that was the Around the World 1 and 2, because each of these had six, um, six in each of these sets. And that's because they're a little bit larger than the other ones. Next up, we will have houseplants. And this is houseplants 1.0. And I love these because you have all of these gorgeous greens. And the greens just make me happy. So we'll go through these real quickly. So that way you can see what they look like. I'm trying to go through quickly because we have so many things to do. And you guys know I talk way too much. And this is going to be a really long video regardless. Um, and it's just going to be a really long video regardless. And the last one that I have completed from the paint. Well, oh, second to last. I have one more. Is the floral edition. Uh, and we have all of these beautiful florals that you can see right through there that I have completed here. And I think on the floral set, my favorite was the Lotus, was my favorite of the floral set. And the final one, truly final of these paint gems that I have completed are the cocktails. And I think my least favorite of my uh, sets or the storage for these sets is probably this style right here, I think is my least favorite. I feel like it's like, because it slots in this way and they're a little bit looser, they just flop around in here a little bit too much. I know I'm speeding through showing them off, but there's so many. So now we're going to go down into some of these specials. And there we go. Let me pop a little drill down. So these are a couple of the minis that I have done. Uh, this one I got in the mystery box from Enablers Outpost. Uh, this one was a small little project from uh, Timu. I think these are like quick little. They come in these little frames. I have a few more, a lot more of these. This is the only one that I actually put in a frame, and that's because I love my pink flamingos. Uh, and there's a couple things in it, like, love these, they're super cute. And then this was my first cross-stitch conversion project. This is actually Christmas present for my dad. I just have not shipped it out yet. And this is a cross-stitch conversion. Um, both of those patterns I got on Etsy. This is one that I got for, I uh, did for my brother. Uh, for, his, for his Christmas present, I'm just waiting for the frame to arrive so I can frame it and send it to my brother. And then over here, I'm like, where do I want to put these? This is another one of those tiny little uh, Timu ones here. And I just didn't do a frame on either of these two because I decided that was too bulky and I didn't plan on hanging these ones up. So these are ones to I felt like were kind of holiday season. Here is one from Jade over at Jade Gem Shop. Uh, and I loved this one. I added a bunch of specials to it. Uh, I would love to see more small shops and more shops in general coming out with some uh, mini kits like this. Um, so that way I know that they are fully licensed because that's one of the things I want to do is get away from having from like budget kits uh, like this 
Uh, I'm not purchasing any more budget kits. Those are ones that I had in my stash. And I want to find like more licensed companies uh, like Jada Gem Shop coming out with these little mini kits like this. Because I love, 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 love the quality and everything about these tiny little kits. Sushi, would you stop? You're knocking my pins over. No, stop it. She's a little brat. And this was a stitch along. Uh, I turned into a cross stitch conversion of snowflakes. Does not uh, come through very well with the crystal ABs like it does on, stop sushi. Sushi, come on, no. Uh, yes, but that one was from Swartz Designs by Abigail Marie. Loved it. I was pay playing canvas chicken the entire time and constantly having to change around and move snowflakes around. And we had an earthquake from the kitten crossing through. All right, so now we get into the actual finishes that I did. So this one uh, is a budget kit from Amazon. So the first few that you're gonna see, I did, actually did a lot of Amazon kits um, because guess what? Just like many of us, I started out with Amazon kits. Uh, once I learned about licensing, I went through my stash and I said, okay, let me find out which of these budget kits that I have in my stash are uh, like stolen art and I had a few that were stolen art and I removed those from my stash uh, and actually ended up just throwing them away so that way I did not have them in my stash anymore and uh, that way they were gone I do and then I ended up donating because of course I'm one that when I jump into a hobby I like jump into it like with both feet all the way so rather than just buying one kit which I bought this kit on like March 31st because I laid the first drills on this canvas on April 3rd when it arrived Rather than just <laughs> buying one kit and going, I bought like, what, 30 kits because, you know, that's the way I roll. I hadn't even laid a drill on it to know if I liked it or not. I just, you know, was like, oh, I think I'm going to like this and bought way too many kits. And I bought my first paint gem at the same time because I had seen an ad for it. So <laughs> that's just the way I roll. And now it's like I don't buy budget kits uh, and the unlicensed kits like this, but uh I had gone through, removed uh, them, donated, uh, actually sent a bunch of the ones, I sent all the rest of them, uh, all but maybe, I think I have like 14 still in my hoard uh, for budget kits that are ones that I just could not part with because they were still like Buddha images or like bamboo uh, images that I want to finish and actually work on. I got rid of the rest of them. Would you not walk on the canvas, kitten? Uh, so those ones, I, that's one of my goals that I want to do in the new year is finish all of those kits uh, as early as possible and get them kind of like out of my hoard and done and over with. So that way I don't have any more budget kits in my, my hoard at all. But you will see those kind of like early on in here in these small kits. And I kind of have my, my like stash of my hoard right here, of my finished hoard, my completed hoard is uh, kind of organized primarily from like in size because I have uh, like three primary portfolios and then we'll move to the floor for the last three canvases that do not fit in the actual portfolios. We'll move to the floor for those three but these canvases are all going to be basically the small ones that fit in a small portfolio uh, and then the medium ones that fit in a slightly small larger portfolio and then the larger ones that fit in the largest size portfolio and these are all I think they're actually the art dot portfolios are the primary ones that I use. So we're gonna roll into these and go from there. So the first one that you see, super cheap uh, budget kit, lots of confetti, uh, very, very dark. I did have to seal this, so it's very, very stiff because I did have to seal it, but that was my first, actually my first finish right there. Next up, I actually really, really loved this one. I did seal it as well because this sticky, the adhesive wasn't very good. Uh, like the drills kind of wanted to slide along the edges, but I loved the image of this one. I loved how it turned out. Uh, and it's actually probably one of my favorite one of, like, I love my Buddha images and I love how the rendering actually was beautiful on this one. And I thought it turned out gorgeous. Um, as far as like, like the quality obviously wasn't very good for the adhesive, but the rendering was gorgeous. Uh, they actually did a great job. Like, obviously the rendering was just computer rendered, but I love the image and was pleased with how it looked, uh, for that image. But yes, that was actually my second one that I finished. Very stiff as well because I sealed it. This one I did not seal. Uh, and it was actually, I have my cheat sheet for my, so I could tell you roughly as we're going through this one. And I gave these names. So uh, come on, no, no, no. Kitten causing chaos and doing crazy things. 
So this one uh, was, I gave these all like random names. So the first one I called Buddha at Sunset. The second one I called Buddha Mandala. This one I called Buddha Seated on Lotus because I had to give them a name <laughs> to kind of keep track of them. This one had a ton of confetti, as you can see. Uh, and I don't mind the super pixely look, but it, they actually came together. And you can actually tell, despite this like super small size, these are all 30 by 40, which really means they're 25 by 35 for these ones here. I did not have to seal this one. This one actually like had really decent quality adhesive and everything else but like you can see the ridiculous colors of some of this confetti on it uh and at this point I had still not yet tried a licensed kit and my next one will be my first licensed kit that I ever tried I still hadn't found out about licensing or anything like that because I was just buying off of Amazon and just my luck my next kit was the first one that I had ever tried as a licensed kit but I didn't even really know the difference. I just was like, I want a unicorn kit. And I happened to find this one on Amazon, which is Unicorn Rainbow uh, by Pixie Sticks. First kit that I ever bought from Diamond Art Club. I bought it on the Amazon store. I did actually go through and repurchase this one because it's something that doesn't come through really well. But you can see that crease right there in the canvas. It's kind of hard to tell. But this one has been creased since the day I bought it. And it's something so simple and so little, and it probably wouldn't bother 99% of people. But yeah, you can see when I when you look at the back of the canvas, that crease right there has been there since the day that I bought it, and it annoys the snot out of me. And these have been sitting here since I finished it on, oh gosh, I finished it on April 22nd. That's when I finished this canvas. Um, and it's been laying flat in a portfolio like this since April 22nd. And I tried like laying it flat underneath things, but again, it's been sitting flat, smashed in a canvas since April 22nd, and it's still got that crease. So I did repurchase this canvas because it annoyed the snot out of me that it had that crease. Um, and I didn't even know about warranty and I ignored the warranty card and all that. So I was like, I probably, at that point, I probably could like reached, could have reached out to Diamond Art Club to see about having something about like the warranty for it with that annoying crease, but I just, it was a cheap enough kit. I just rebought this canvas and I want to add more specials to it because uh, it only came with two ABs on here and I want to add a bunch of specials, bling up the rainbow back here like you'll see I've done in some of my later kits and add more to it. But this was my first ever licensed kit, Unicorn Rainbow by Pixie Sticks. Loved it, super adorable. And this is my first exposure to the pleasure and fun of working on a licensed kit and the quality difference between that and Amazon kits. And I was like, oh, hey, this is great. I think I want to buy more. So I then started like looking more into Diamond Art Club and I started buying uh, and making more purchases from Diamond Art Club from their actual storefront and then more of the Amazon kits from Diamond Art Club at that point in time. So that was my first exposure and foray into the world, the dangerous slippery slope of Diamond Art Club and licensed kits. So this one is the one and only kit that I have completed from Timu. It is a super, super tiny one. I called this Buddha head small. It is like a 20 by 30, which really means a 15 by 25. Um, the drills, like I loved the picture and the imaging. Uh, the rendering is a little harsh between here and here. I liked the background and how they did the rays in the background here with the mandala behind it. I did have to seal this because the drills were just popping like crazy on this. So it's very, very stiff because I had to seal it. Uh, but that was this one right here. Again, you can see I love my Buddha uh, images. It's just very hard to find actual Buddha, like licensed Buddha kits. Uh, I have found a couple that I have been able to got, find and purchase. I'm waiting for, like I've had, I'm waiting for the one, uh, one of them on Diamond Art Club to come back in stock, like the partial that they have of the Buddha head to come back in stock. It has been out of stock for absolutely forever since I found it. And basically since I found Diamond Art Club, that image has been out of stock. And I'm like signed up for notifications and I want it to come back in stock because I want more Buddha images. But, and that's like the hassle is it's so hard to find them. This one right here um, was finish number six. I called this Buddha head. Uh, and this is kind of like an example of where the image that you think you're buying on the website looks completely different than the image that you actually get sent to you. Uh, I actually, I did have to seal this one as well. Um, this is another 30 by 40. Uh, and it is looks totally different than the picture that, again, 
uh, it was taken from. And like, I loved the look and the feel for it. Um, and I think it was one that they had taken from an artist's work and they had tried, like, tried to modify it slightly so that they could like squeak by as like not totally stealing the work, but it's very, very similar to an actual licensed image that I found when I was doing like image searches after I had already completed this one. But that is number six. And then now we're going into like number seven is like way down here that that one right down there is number seven so now we're going to skip ahead to some more of my small ones so this is actually number 16 ember this was uh, one of my first forays into actually working on like my own idea to bling up a kit loved this this is ember by pixie sticks uh, and it is beyond adorable. I used ABs to bling the background in the dragon's body. And I kind of looked, pulled it out, looked at what I wanted to add bling to. I did the clouds. I did a, like the grass. And I did like a combination of the ABs and the regular in the body of Ember. And that's what gave it this super adorable look right here. And I thought it turned out wonderfully. And I'm super pleased with this. This was a pleasure to work on. It's an adorable little kit. It's a 22.7 by 26.6 centimeters and super, super fun and adorable to work on. Now we're going to get into the kits that I worked on for Summer with the Masters. So uh, I think they're, yeah, they're, no, they're, so this one right here was finish number 20, which was Van Gogh's Starry Night. Uh, and this one, for being an Amazon kit, actually turned out really well. I was really pleased with it. The drill quality was wonderful. Like I was super impressed with this one for an Amazon kit. Cause at this point I had already had this in my stash. Uh, it was already sitting there like waiting for me. I had stopped purchasing cause I, I, I like by September, obviously I already, well by July cause Summer with Masters was ran from what? Like, uh, June and July, correct? or what, however far, I think it was like whatever time frame uh, Summer with the Masters ran. Uh, let's see, when did I complete the first one for Summer with the Masters? June, yeah. So for June to July was Summer with the Masters. And I think this is the last one that I did for Summer with the Masters. No, this is second to last that I did. I did a lot of them for Summer with the Masters of these small Amazon kits that I had in my stash of my favorite Masters kits that I had already purchased uh, before I even knew about Summer with the Masters. Uh, and this is one that I had in my stash, so I did Starry Night by Van Gogh. I was impressed with that drill quality for a budget kit, um, and I was pleased with it. It turned out really well. No need to seal this one, uh, and at some point, it would be nice to work on some, like, see if some nicer quality ones turned out better. This one was a 30 by 40, which really, again, like the 25 by 35 as well for that one. So now we move on to this. This is Temptation. It is the only diamond dots that I completed. It was a 25 by 23 centimeter kit and it was a, uh, let's see, they didn't have any, this was a Shutterstock image. They called it Simply Dots, but basically diamond dots. Uh, this one is my 22nd finish and I added some bling into the lips so I added some a I think it was charted with I think it was it charted with ABs I don't remember uh, but I added some crystals as well uh, to add a, I added so it had some up in here I added some crystals and some more stuff to add a little bit more depth into the lips and I thought it turned out beautiful and it was like the simplicity this is the only diamond dots that I've done I've only had two in my stash this one is around and then I have a square as well but that was a nice fun little finish there and then we roll into these ones. These are like these last uh, small uh, budget kits that I have were ones that I did in September. I took a few with me when I went to visit uh, my mom uh, and my dad in September because I wanted something that I didn't care about uh, to haul in my suitcase. So this was one that kind of was reminiscent of, it's, they called it a tropical landscape. It came as like a pack of four. I kept two, I think I gave one to my mom and I like gave away one of the other ones. Uh, and this kind of reminded me of uh, Mokali'i or Chinaman's hat in Oahu. Uh, so that was one that I completed right there. No issues with the drill quality on this one. It turned out quite well. This one right here was another one that was a tropical landscape from that set. It looks kind of off in the sky and that's because I realized when I was finished placing these drills up at this top part, I realized that I had just placed the wrong color. This blue right here is supposed to be the cloud color. And then this blue right 
the cat just knocked over a bunch of things. And this color right here is supposed to be the regular color. So I placed the cloud color instead of the background sky color, but I had already placed all of this confetti up at the top. Uh, and I was like, I'm not going to go pick those off. I don't care that much. It's because I had already placed it in all of this confetti part. So I left it as is, so it looks a little weird, but... <laughs> I'm like, I don't care. I can't be bothered. If I really wanted to, I could always like cut it off like that and make it like just cut off that whole section of sky and leave it like that. And it would look completely fine. So I was like, if I really wanted to do something with it, I could just do that and we'd be good because then you'd have the light color of the sky up where it needs to be as if it was clouds and call it a day. So that one right there is finish number 32. And then we roll into this one, which I also finished uh, while I was visiting my parents. Uh, I finished so many kits in like that almost two week period that I was at my parents' house. This one I called Buddha Seated. It's finished 33. Uh, another one of those 30 by 40s that's really 25 by 35. This one was like sheer confetti. Uh, I feel like every single drill that you placed was confetti. The only areas that were not confetti was this tiny little patch of light blue and this tiny little patch of like teal right there everything else sheer confetti in this thing it was like everything sheer confetti crazy confetti but i love how it looks and i love that feel like it makes me feel like i'm actually sitting in a uh like i'm actually in a temple looking at a buddha statue in the dark uh like almost smoky areas of a temple so that's what it kind of makes me feel like and it kind of has that layer to it. So yes, sheer confetti, but the confetti works on this one. So there's that one. And then the last of my super, super like small size snacky kits were ones that I actually finished in uh, December. So you would have seen them if you watched my December month in review. So this is Meowie Christmas. Um, this was finish number, let me roll back down, number 42. This is a 23 by 35 and it is actually... Uh, so basically, they actually advertise DAC, Diamond Art Club, uh, licensed kit, Diamond Art Club. Uh, the other ones, I didn't really go over like numbers of colors and everything else. That's all stuff that if you want those details, you can look at those details in the month and reviews because I don't have time to go over all of those details for you guys. I love this. I did mention like for how many colors this had, I 43 colors on this tiny kit. I know I just said I wasn't going to go over it. But the one thing like I thought it was super beautiful. I love the depth of colors that you get on this which the reason why you get all of these depths of colors in the depth with this canvas is because it has those 43 colors but i mean you because this is so tiny it's like in the eyes you literally have two two different shades of like blue gray in the eyes that you get like one color you have six drills of the other one you have like five drills of and i know it's nice to have like that variation but at the same time i'm like why why can't we just do like one color and have, like I was just like okay seriously okay the next kit if you don't want to see it is one that is from the diamond art club advent calendar so for that one if you don't want to see it you might want to look away because I am going to reveal that one so this is your one warning for that but our next one is done decorating this is uh, and I should have said that the uh, meowy Christmas was by Eau Claire, Eau Claire studio Done decorating. This is a peanuts kit. I loved this. This is super cute. This is my first time working with the, uh, L the, um, what do they call them? The electro drills or whatever, but basically the, the diamond art club crystals. Uh, they always call them weird things, but to me, they're just, they're the crystals. This was finish number 43. It was a 23 by 29 and it was so much fun. This is probably out of all of these kits here. This is the one that took me the least amount of time to do. It was so tiny, uh, but there's so much color blocking in here. I mean, you literally only have nine colors and half of those colors, five of those colors are in these light bulbs. So the bulk of your colors that you have, I mean, you have a white, a red, a blue, and a black. That's like the majority of your canvas right there. Loved this. This was a dream to work on. Super fun. So that one was right there. Number 44 was Christmas Unicorn. And this was by the artist Azindian uh, Lenny. I don't know how to pronounce that name. But this was actually from, I think this was from the Diamond Art Club Advent Calendar in 2022. Uh, I did add some specials to it. I actually threw in the AB310 for the ears, the eyes, and made it super blingy because this was adorable and I loved it. Um, 
I was just in like, I was like, you know what, that's going to be like my Christmas kits for, uh, we're all just like these tiny little blinged up little kits that I did. The, basically all of my Christmas kits for December were these little kits. And I love my unicorns and I thought this one was perfect for my peels for Christmas um, for here. And this was my first time using an actual charted uh, metallic drill. Uh, I think they call it, what do they call this? Is that like an iridescent? Is that what uh, Diamond Art Club calls these drills? Iridescent drills? <laughs> but a metallic drill, basically. Um, I can never keep straight what Diamond Art Club calls their special drills. But the K drills, metallic drills. Oh, gee, you gotta move. Uh, and like I said, this one was a finish number 44, and it was a 22.7 by 30.8 centimeter canvas. Oh, gee, gotta move. Don't, you can't lay on top of the canvases. You're silly, silly cat. All right, this one was actually the first square canvas that I finished. Now that we finished those tiny ones, I can actually bring this up a little bit higher so we can actually see some things. So this one was my first square canvas that I did uh, from, uh, well, from anything, first square ever. And this is the uh, Starry Night Night Music by Wanda Mum, and it is a, um, it was finish number eight, and it's a 33 by 46 centimeter. After this, I was like, do I even want to do squares? <laughs> I was kind of like, what have I gotten myself into? I was kind of like, this is ridiculous, because I was flying through the other kits, and then I did this, and I'm like, what did I even get myself into? But then if you look at it, it's got 63 colors for something this small, 63 colors. So I don't know that I picked a very wise kit as my first ever square kit. Like, I don't know. It, this was a super, it turned out beautifully, and I don't think I did too bad as far as like my first ever square that I worked on. I don't think I did too bad with it, but at the same time, like, it was, it was a challenge to do. I was like, I don't, I don't think I knew what I was doing, and you can see there's spots where uh, there's definitely some gapping in here because I don't know if it was because I picked some of the drills that have those little tabs on them and didn't realize, but I was kind of like, what am I even doing with myself as I was working on it? Because I had never worked on a square beyond the paint gems. But that was this one here, which was finish number eight. And then I was like, okay, uh, I w was working on a round and a square at the same time. And I was like, I need to see, do I feel any different about a square if there's less confetti? So I pulled out um, this one, which was paint in the moon. It's a 33 by 46, so very similar size but a fraction of the colors. This one only had 28 colors and it was a lot more color blocky and it did go a lot better. Um, so Starry Night Night Music took me 28 hours and 10 minutes for how small it was. Paint the Moon took me 17 hours and three minutes. So, and that main difference was, again, I was getting used to what I, what I was doing, but at the same time, it's also the confetti was a huge factor. Uh, for it because I probably should have picked a better canvas. I should have started with this canvas to learn squares and what I was doing rather than starting with like probably the most confetti heavy canvas of these little canvases. And these were ones because again I was working on um, these are all just the um, squares that were ones that I had picked up from um, the Amazon storefront because I had were, like picked them up and I don't think I had purchased an actual full-fledged square yet. I just had these ones from the Amazon storefront uh, as squares to do. And this one was finish number 10 was Paint the Moon. And then we come into a few more of my um, smaller, so we're still kind of working on our size. This was finish number 11, which is Buddha Bamboo Water is what I called it. Uh, this is one that I was really, uh, like the image of what it was supposed to be was really pretty, but I was very, like, I was very kind of like disheartened with how it actually turned out because it's supposed to be Buddha sitting on like this glassy water surface and you're supposed to have like the water line right here. And then like this cloudy sky background behind him. And you can't even tell that he's sitting on the water. And it just looks nothing like what it was supposed to. He's got all of these random blues in his, like this blue confetti on him. It just does not look anything like what it was supposed to look like. 
you can still tell it's a Buddha, you can still tell it's bamboo, but you can't tell that this is really, that. to me it doesn't even look like this is water. Even though it kind of gives a feel, but not really, because it's like there's no differentiation right here between here beyond the pseudo ripple, but there's no differentiation between this color and this color. And it's a very harsh blue to white. There's no gradation on it. Uh, and that was one of the things on this one. This one is a 35 by 35, which I think it was actually, is it actually 35 by 35? Uh, no, it's a 30 by 30. So that was this one here, which was another Amazon kit. And then we have um, my, actually the first kit that I did for Summer with the Masters. This is a Hokusai uh, canvas or a Hokusai uh, print. Um, this is South Wind Clear Sky or uh, was basically the image of it with uh, which commonly people refer to this as Red Fuji because there's Mount Fuji looking all red in this view. Um, as you can see, this part looks uh, fairly good, looked great. There were some spot works on this one where I think this particular month I was constantly placing the wrong drills in the wrong place where I would pull out, I would say, okay, I'm going to work on this symbol and I would grab it, but then I would start placing it on a completely wrong symbol. I don't know what was up that month. I was just kind of like off and doing like something completely random. It's got a lot of random confetti up in these clouds where it's like, why do we have these pinks and these colors that have nothing to do with what's going on down here? It's like, it's just like, why? Why does, why do we need these, like these shades of blue and pink? Yeah, you can't really tell when you look at it from here, but there's these funky, like you can see right there, like those colors have nothing to do with the sky color. Also, they either, like they could have, I know that it's like the original wood block, has the signature and everything over here and then the other like it has the signature and everything right in this area but they could have removed both of those and just left it with the blue background so overall not horrible horrible like as far as an amazon kit like this could have this was not bad like as far as what it could have been the actual render uh for this part was blah the confetti was kind of blah because this was a lot of confetti. Even this background, you'd think it's just blue, but no, that's confetti. This was a very confetti-heavy kit, but the actual subject matter, not too shabby. Uh, and this one was finish number... Where are we at? Because this was Summer with the Masters, so June and July. Uh, finish number 12, which was a true, dis a true 40 by 30 for this one here. And then we go into Fairy Bunny. Fairy Bunny was finished number 14. This is a Rita Konya kit by Diamond Art Club. And this was a 32.8 by 40.6. And this is another one from their Amazon storefront. So as you can see, I purchased a lot from this Amazon storefront. And this one was an absolute dream to work on. Super fun, super pleasant. I did mix up a couple drills over on this side, but there were so many different shades of purple on here that I just let it be and didn't even bother with it. Uh, and I loved it as is. I had no issues or no complaints with this, minus the fact that, again, like, with the greens, obviously there's going to be some shades that you only need a couple drills of because there's only a couple things that are green in this kit here. So that's not something that they could have really changed. But this one was super cute, super adorable, super fun to work on, and I, I was totally feeling these vibes and the depth of this one here. And it is... So pretty, so soft, so dreamy. And that was Fairy Bunny. Next up, another of my uh, Summer with Master kits. And this, I think, is the first time that I actually had to section a kit. Like, I would have to section. Like, this is my first time sectioning a kit for, um, like, most people section kits. That If you've watched any of my videos you'd know, or my whipping chats, you should know that I despise sectioning. Like I am not one to sit here and do a section like this and then move into a section like this. That to me just like, oh, it like eats, eats my soul to do a section like that. Normally a kit like this, I'd say, okay, cut it in half, work on this half, work on this half. And that would be my sections for a kit this size. This one, because of the sheer confetti, I think I started doing my normal way of doing it. And then I was like, I can't, this is, this is, I can't do it like this. It was just not, um, 
doing it like it was I had to actually section it like normal and it was just killing me to do it so this one is slight it says it's a 40 by 50 which really means a 35 by 45 this is Monet's water lilies uh and that was another summer with a master's kit that I did um sheer confetti obviously uh and there's a lot that I feel like this needs to be rendered much larger to give this uh to do this one justice so that was Monet's water lilies much too small for what it was but again you know you don't know these things when you're just starting out so you say oh hey I want these small you have no concept of size you have no concept of anything so these are things these are the common mistakes that we all if you don't know tend to miss to make when we're just starting out and we learn as we go so you know this is me showing you the things that I learned when I started out if you're going to pick a heavy confetti canvas that like this you need to pick something like big so this is when if I were to do Monet's water lilies again I would get it a custom made from like Jada Gem Shop in a much larger size than a 35 by 45 because that does not do that beautiful image justice next up again another one I love Hokusai's um series uh, of the 100 views of Mount Fuji um I love all of the views of Mount Fuji for his series and I tried to pick I like I tried to find some of my favorite images from it and this is one that was probably one of the worst renderings I have. I bought like four or five from this particular company off of Amazon to complete. This is another one that was actually a true 40 by 50. This one is the Bay of Noboto. This one is the first one of them that I did. Uh, so I did the first, I did Red Fuji from a different company and I bought four or five from this company um, and did. And after I completed this one, I was like, I planned on doing multiple ones from that company for uh, Summer with the Masters because I was like, hey, I've got all of these. I'm going to do these for Summer with the Masters uh, because I love all of Hokusai's uh, woodblock prints. And I did this one. And I was like, I, I can't work on the rest of them. And they just like went in the trash because this is a person. These are two separate people. But to me, they look like a camel. Like it's, it's beyond horrible. And I mean, like you should be able to easily, like this is one of the sim most simple things to render on here. But look at how horrible that is. Like it is beyond horrible. Again, like this is an example of why we need to like not purchase from some of these like super super cheap budget companies and you want to purchase from something more reputable and go with like licensed companies and order a custom from a licensed company of some of these artists because look this is what you can get like that's horrible and that's supposed to be grass it's sheer yellow like pure yellow uh and in the original art yeah there are yellow it is some yellow tones but it's not like this glaring yellow and there's a color differentiation between this and the Tory gates and I mean like this has 20 different shades of confetti in it uh, on this gate here I mean you can look at it and you can see horrible ridiculous so there's that one this one here was one that turned out fantastic this one is my one and only double-sided adhesive kit that I have ever worked on uh this is Hokusai's the uh Great Wave off Kanagawa it is a 45 by 35 which really means it is a uh, 40 by 30 and it was actually, uh, I was pleased with how it was rendered. Uh, the drill quality was amazing and fantastic. I love how it turned out. The only thing that did not turn off greatest was like right over here. The typical goal, like, because that has to be much larger to render well on a canvas like this. But everything else I am super pleased with uh, for a kit this small. Like the boats, yeah, they don't come out the greatest for the boats and the waves. But I mean, overall for a canvas this small for an image like this it's really not horrible and like I was pleased with it I was a little nervous to do this one because it was a double-sided adhesive but that was this one here the one and only double-sided adhesive I have worked on now I'm done with my summer with the master kits this is rainbow poop emoji by on Denise LaFauci Snyder and this is from Sparkle Queen Creations and I did add, uh, this is one of the first kits that I actually sat down and planned bling for. Uh, and it came with a couple different ABs. It had one, two, three, four ABs. And I added extra ABs to it. I don't have like my 
I have, I, well, I have my stuff over there, but I'm not going to go into the details for it. But I did add a bunch of extra bling to it to give it some extra sparkle throughout. So if you buy this kit, you're not going to get nearly as much bling on it and as much sparkle as what you're going to see in this one. So if you want to know what all I added to make it look as beautifully sparkly as what it is right in here with all these extra ABs that I added, go check out the post review that I did on this where I go into detail on what I added. But I loved this one. This was super cute. Uh, the one thing that I don't like about working on these kits is they come in those tiny little 200 drill blister packs, which annoys me. I do not like those blister packs, but I love how this turned out. And this is a 40 by 30, like an actual true to size. Uh, well, 30 by 40, actual true to size. I loved the colorfulness of this. Super fun to do. This was finish number 23. Then we have, out of all of my licensed kits, probably my most disappointing licensed kit out of all of them was this one here. Um, so we all know, uh, well, many of you, if you've been around for a little bit, know the story and know the history behind DIY Moon Shop and how, the, like, that they are no longer in business. And Diamond Painting Fanatics now owns, uh, kind of took over uh, from them and now owns the license and writes for many of like some of the artists from there some of them have moved on to other shops um I had purchased I would had purchased four kits from DIY Moonshop and they had not arrived by the time every they had everything had gone up in smoke and everything else and I didn't even know if I was going to get my canvases thankfully I did and I was honestly shocked and surprised that I got my canvases so they must have shipped them shortly before everything kind of like kind of went up in smoke and everything so this is one that I had gotten it is a Sybil art canvas this is purple spring it is a 30 by 36 and uh, 30 by 38 actually and I love Sybil art's art uh, I love all of her images this is one that I wanted to try and I have a post review uh, of it uh, on my uh, channel so you can check that out where I go in depth on it but it looks better on camera than it does in person. There are some colors on this that, like, I am not exaggerating when I say they literally had one drill of an entire color. That's it on this entire canvas. And I'm like, what What was the point of this? You could have just used another color on here. So it was obviously computer-generated render with confetti that was unnecessary that could have been easily cleaned up. And obviously, they this was offered in way too small of a size. Uh, I... That's one of the things that if you're going to offer an image on your on your website in a small size, you obviously need to be able to back it up and know that it's going to render well. I am a person that I prefer working on smaller canvases. Me personally, I love the small canvases. I love being able to do a small image. I enjoy those small canvases. Some people love massive canvases. I like small canvases. So for me, that's something that... If you're going to offer a small canvas, I'm going to buy the small size that you have, trusting that if you're putting it up on your website and offering a small canvas, you're standing behind your work and you're going to say that this will turn out and it will look good. Obviously, this one did not. So I have another one of a similar size, I believe, by Sybil Art, and I'm kind of like, well, we will see how that looks. But uh, again, that's kind of a moot point because obviously you cannot buy canvases these canvases anymore because the company itself no longer exists but that was like if we had to say my most disappointing kit as far as the licensed kits because I don't really count the unlicensed kits but most disappointing kit as far as the licensed kit that would be this one right here that was my biggest disappointment for the, the year Next up, we have Sunbathing Kitty by Diamond Art Club, and this is by Eve Izette, and this one was finished number 29, and it is a 32 by 42. I took this one to Florida with me in September to visit my parents, and I loved everything about it. I love the big ears. I know technically this is, uh, kind of reminds me, makes me think of it like a sphinx for this one here, or like a Siamese, but it also reminded me of my girls with the big massive ears. And of course, there was a ton of color blocking right back here. But I worked on this one in Florida, so I took it with me, traveled with it, and had a blast with it. There's so many colors on it, so much depth to this one. There's only one AB, uh, which is kind of, but I think it's an older image too at the same time. So that's one of the things that, like, with the older images, you're not going to see as many of uh, the special drills. But this one was a pleasure to work on. Uh, I had a blast with it. It doesn't look like my work on it was not nearly as good as my 
normal work because when I traveled, I didn't have my normal setup. So I had to get creative and work creatively. So, but that was this one here, which was finish number 29. And then I do have this one. I think it's the last one of the, um, the budget kits that you'll see in here. Cause this one was number 31. Uh, and this one is a mandala and it's a 35 by 35. So really a 30 by 30. And again, this is one that I took to Florida with me. The last, the four that I took of the budget kits to work on. Uh, and you know, just fun to work in a mandala to do those. This is one, I think it came folded in half and really as you can see that you can't even really tell that this one was completely folded in half unless you turn it over and look at the back but it looks completely fine uh when you look at it like this unlike the diamond art club canvas where when you look at it you can tell that there was a crease and it annoys me when i see it this one you can't even tell that there was a crease so nothing really to say about that one you know standard budget kit no big deal uh for that all right and then here we go. We're going to keep going. Uh, this is another one from Denise LaFauci Snyder from Sparkle Queen Creations. This one is Kawaii Rainbow. And this is a finish from December. It is actually finish number 40. And it actually came with no ABs. And I'm like, how can I have this rainbow and have no ABs? So I added a bunch of ABs for it. Super cute, super fun to work on. I loved all of the color blocking in it. I needed the past that pastel vibes and I needed all of that. Oh, I needed it in my life. So loved it, loved everything about it. Super, except for the fact that it came in those like 200 year old blister packs that annoy me and I do not like them. Uh, and then of course, like it didn't come with a sticker sheet or anything like that. So I had to make my own like sticker sheet uh, legend. So I just used like little labels, my own little labels for it. But loved this. If you want to see more details and like know what I added, special drill wise, check out the post review. I don't have the time to go into all the details, but super cute. I love the colors. It just makes me happy. These vibes make me happy. And then next up, we have Kitsch Miss or Kitschy Deer by Irma Van Heumann. And this is from Enablers Outpost. And this kit right here just gives me all the happy Christmassy vibes ever. This is finish number 41 and so much fun. I did add some specials to it, of course, because I had to. It did come with five different ABs. This is so much fun. Um, both this one and the last one were 40, were like that one was a 40 by 30. This is a 30 by 40. They are super, super fun. I like, I love the colors. I added some pixie dust into here. Uh, I added some crystals for the blue. And I think there were crystal ABs is what I added. But loved this. It was a pleasure to work on, and I think the only thing that I had, there were a couple symbols where I felt like the symbol was a little bit too big for the background, uh, but other than that, I didn't have any, but I, so I just had to focus on how I was placing. It was a confetti heavy kit, but it worked out, and you had to have the confetti for how watercolory this was and how beautiful this image was, and I loved it. It was a pleasure to work on and made me very happy. Next up we go into our larger kits so this was my the first large kit at the time I was like what am I doing this feels massive because I had only worked on like Amazon 30 by 40s things like that so this is daylight by puffy gator it is a 42.6 by 50.7 and this felt absolutely massive it felt what like when I worked on it I was like what in the world is this this is huge so huge but this was like literally my first uh, large kit, large kit, and then I promptly started working on bigger than this kits, and it felt so big to work on. Uh, I loved it. I had a pleasure working on this one. No real problem. I did have some patches of this that I felt like the adhesive was not as sticky as it could have been, but I didn't know any different because it was like the first, it was only my second uh, diamond art club to work on unicorn rainbow was the first this was the second one of the diamond art clubs that I worked on because it was from I think it was from like my first order of um diamond art clubs that I had placed because uh, I had just found diamond art club and placed orders and everything so I think it's from my first ever like order of that I had placed I loved these rainbow colors and rainbow vibes they just made me super happy one of the big things that I didn't like was how 
this outline right here really stood out. That annoys me to no end. I feel like you don't need this really vibrant blue outline right here. You could have done something to kind of fade it into the background. How here we kind of fade into the background. I don't feel like we need this blue right here because that just irks me to no end. I'm like, why do we have no blue outline anywhere else? But we have this blue outline right here. Why? Why? So that annoys me. The, everything else about this was a dream. I enjoyed it. I thought this was such a beautiful image. Love it. Love it. Love it. Probably my favorite of any of the puffy gators is this one right here. Next up, we have Genesis 1. And this is finish number 9. And this is by Jessie. And she is beautiful. This was where I really got to practice the color blocking with a multi-placer and work on that. Um, this is rounds, of course. Uh, I'll point out any of them that I do that are squares for you guys because there's only seven squares in here and we've already seen two of them. So this right here is um, where I really did practice all of the color blocking with this 550 around the edges. And I just kind of got to really get good at that. And I love color blocking. It's like some people do not like it. I love it. It's so much fun. I enjoy it to no end. The only thing that I did not enjoy about this canvas, or well, the only thing that I like, that I don't like about it is I feel like the apple in her hand, there needed to be like a difference in the color because like literally the apple in her hand are the exact same colors. So you look at it and you don't realize that that's an apple until you really step back and look. And then you're like, oh, she's holding an apple. It took me a while to realize, oh, she's holding an apple. This is supposed to be Eve. Okay. It took me a while to get that. Uh, and I love the fact that she's got these tattoos. It looks like like tattoos or she's wearing an outfit. But it, to me, it makes it looks like she's wearing tattoos or she has tattoos. But beautiful. Love this. Gorgeous. This piece of art is incredible beautiful and like I love this AB border around everything in this blue AB outline like love it beautiful but that is Genesis 1 and now we're going to get into my first large square this right here is um this is going to be Pride by Sandra Winther and I did this for the um for June for Pride Month and for the Pride event hosted by Brie and Lexi so Lexi Sparkles and uh, Brie over at Painting with Pities. And I wanted this one. So this is my first like large square. And it was also my first time adding any kind of like extra special drills to a kit of any type. Because this is the only my 13th kit. So this is the first time ever adding special drills. And with her, I wanted, I once I saw her with like the cracks through her face... I looked at it and I was like, this makes me think of Kintsugi, which is a Japanese art where if you break, uh, so in Kintsugi, if you break any kind of ceramics in Japanese culture, you don't throw away the ceramic. You take it and you use, a, you basically, you use the gold plating to put it back together, or you basically, you glue it back together and then you fill the crack with gold. And you end up with this beautiful work of art where the crack used to be. And that's Kintsugi. And it basically kind of gives you that feel that base, whatever you think may have broken you, you just creates an even more beautiful piece of art and piece. Like it, it just the message that it gives for this, I loved. So this one was gorgeous. Love it. She is beyond beautiful. And that is Pride by Sandra Winther. And I love these like flames and colors. Gorgeous. Took me forever to do this one. And that was like I had to work on multiple rounds at the same time that I was working on her because this was so intense working on all of these squares. But loved her. And that was my first time ever adding kind of any bling to a canvas. Uh, like a, any canvas at all, let alone a square. But loved that. And then I decided, oh, you know what? I think I could do this blinking thing. So I did Ember and then a couple, then like after Ember, I added bling to this one. This is like the only craft ease that I worked on for the month. This is Jap Day Pearls uh, and it is a 45 by 6, 55. I should have said how big Pride was. Pride was a 56 by 66. This one, a lot smaller. Whew. 
we are still going. Oh my goodness. And we have so we well, we're almost we're getting close to the end. Sort of, maybe. All right. So this is Jack Day Pearls Glow by Sybil Art, 45 by 55. And she was charted with uh, glow drills for her outline for everything. And I was like, um, no, not doing that. So I added a bunch of specials to her. And I really kind of like, this is my first time kind of looking at a canvas and specifically buying special drills for a canvas by pulling it out and looking at it. And I love how it turned out. This is another one that if you want to know what all I did with her and all of the changes that I made, uh, feel free to like go over to my post reviews uh, for uh, canvases and check it out because that I'll go in depth with all of the changes that I made. I love how it turned out. There's only a couple things that I didn't like for this one rendering wise. That's a very harsh transition there. You can't really see the hand. I kind of had to make up some rendering for her hand over there because I didn't like how it was charted I because the line went right across her finger. So there were some things like that that I didn't like. But overall, I was very pleased with it. I love the gradations and how they did the background. That was beautiful. Loved that. But I was very pleased with how this one right here turned out. She overall, as far as like me adding bling to a project, loved it. And that one was finish number 18. Next up, we have Milagros La Luna. And this is for the JBG along. This is a 51 by 64. And this one, I added all the bling from uh, all the suggested bling from DP with Sparklers. So I have it all in these flowers, like literally everywhere on her has all sorts of added bling. I did change some things around that I didn't like and mixed up, added a little bit extra. But she has so much added bling to her all over her. Uh, again, I think I did a post review on her with all the added bling. Um, usually if I add bling to a canvas, then I do a post review. If I don't add bling, you won't see a post review on a diamond art club. I'll typically do post reviews of these small shops, but not diamond art clubs, unless they have added bling like this. Then I'll go through and do a post review. Lo this one, I love how it turned out. This was probably the most frustrating canvas out of all of my canvases to work on. And I say that because even though, yes, it is a diamond art club, this is a Jasmine Beckett Griffith. It is a 51 by 64. The adhesive on this was the worst adhesive ever. Um, and this is one where I'm worried that if I roll this canvas up, that the drills will just like pop right off. Um, I have not sealed it and that's because like the drills aren't popping as far as like popping drills normally. The adhesive is just so like weak on this canvas that I, it was an ordeal to get them to actually stick to the canvas and it just drove me up the wall and was so frustrating to work on because I couldn't get the drills to actually stick well. And it was like I had to find the least sticky putty I had to try to get these drills to stick on this canvas. It was so frustrating. So it was, yes, it was, it was an ordeal and it was annoying as all get out. But that was Milagros La Luna. Um, I love how she turned out. She's beautiful. Love the colors. Love everything about it and how that turned out. But frustrating to work on. And annoying as I'll get out. So then after that one, I have Temptation, or I have Talisman, sorry. Talisman, which is by Angeli Aubrey. And this one is also a Diamond Art Club. And this is a 51 by 66. And I also, um, let's see, for this one, I think this is one that... I I did my own bling a plan for this one. I kind of took like the plan, the idea of what Milagros La Luna was and created my own bling plan from that. And I love how it turned out. This was my first time using the uh, square or like the quad pearls. I added like uh, crystals. I added the pearl... A, B things. I added all the things. I added metallics. I added everything on this and it turned out beautiful. Again, there is a post review of this one, I believe because of all of the bling that I added and it turned out gorgeous. This entire white filig filigree that you see back here is in A, B to add a, like an extra sparkle to it. Uh, you can kind of see up in here, but that's all AB. All of these flowers have all sorts of sparkle over them. I love how she turned out. She was a pleasure to work on. Um, I didn't have the adhesive issues on this one that I had on the other one. And Talisman was finished number 24. 
Now we get into August. This is Usagi City. And Usagi City is going to be finished number 25, 40 by 70. This is by the artist Trey Scatos from Jaded Gem Shop. And this was for the Sailor Moon event. And this right here, you can see it's a very skinny but long one. And this was my first finish or my first uh, Jaded Gem Shop kit that I worked on. And there is a lot of uh, confetti in her kits but it works and it gives you a good render. And this one was, again, I like to work on the smallest size there are. I did add a couple specials to this one. It came, I had AB's charted in it and the entire background, this entire background right here is AB. It is beautiful. That entire background is AB 210. Love it. Love, love, love. And then we have the white and then we have a blue AB up in the top. I added uh, some crystal ABs, and then I added some bubbles over here for the moon. Uh, those are the extra AB, the, the extra um, specials that I added for this one here. She turned out gorgeous. There was some extra confetti, like there's some random confetti that I feel like could easily be cleaned up on some of the Jaded Gem Shop kits. And there were some drill or some um, things when you look with the rounds where there were some areas where I had to turn off my light pad in order to see a couple symbols uh, because they had the white background. Uh, and that was one of those things where I think it was like the clover. Uh, so looking at the clover and then looking at the spade and the dollar sign and the square. So those ones, they were kind of like blown out and I had to turn off my light pad in order to be able to see them. But that was Usagi City, finish number 25 for that event. And then we get into October. So I did Halloween Pug. Well, actually, I think this one was still in September. No, yeah, this was still September. So I did Halloween Pug. And this was a partial. I think this is the only partial that you see on these finishes. And, of course, I had to do this. This is a Marilyn Kazanabe. Um, and I had to do Halloween Pug because, I mean, classic. And this is actually one of the squares that I completed because Halloween Pug is a square. Uh, no issues with this. Super adorable. And, you know, like, I had to do it. Like, I had to. I had to do the pug. But love love it. Super pretty. Super gore. Super, like, I mean, look at those eyes. Look at those eyes. Nothing really to say about that one. Worked up super nice, super fast. And that is a 56 by 56 square. Next up, we have a Boba Kitty from Mooney Maid. This is a 35 by 35 from Jessica Maltizo. And Boba Kitty was adorable. Came with two ABs. I did add a bunch of other extra special drills in. Like this entire background right here, I added as like a uh, crystal AB right here. Like literally added a bunch of extras. I added bubbles. I added like uh, square crystal ab squares i added so many specials to this you can see more on that in the post review uh, but i wanted to have like all the bling on this one here and boba kitty was super adorable super fun no issues with this the drill like it was a pleasure to work on loved everything about it and super adorable and that one was finished 27 so then we have lady luck Lady Luck was actually what I did for the, um, I'm probably forgetting some of the events that I participated in. Lady Luck is from Romy Lerda. This is the only Dreamer Designs that I finished for um, this year. It was, this is a 40 by 50. And this is the one that I did for Hispanic Heritage Month. Because even though it is an Asian image, the artist is... Romy Lerda, who is definitely Hispanic. And I loved the fact that, I like the fact that Dreamer Designs so far seems to add so many special drills. I mean, this was charted with one, two, three, four, five, six specials. And then I added all the bling in the filigree and the background, like all of the golds and bronzes and everything to that background. I feel like it needed all of it right back in here and then coming down onto the shoulder. I love how that turned out. Like, it really, really turned out beautifully. 
I'm not one for like all of like the big eyed girls except for like I like something about Romy Laredes art. I love how she does her art. No issues with this canvas. Uh, I They have like a particularly creepy backing on their canvases. It reminds me. Yeah, it's a particularly creepy backing on their canvases, but uh, no issues with the adhesive or anything about it. Love this one as a finish. Um, I think as far as like the charting and what I did with specials, Talisman and Lady Luck are two of my favorites that I've done as far as like the bling and the specials that I've added into it. They're two of my favorites that I've done. Next up was my Night Court November kit. This is the Painter by um, Maison Duty from Jaded Gem Shop. This one is finish number 38. It's a 45 by 60, also in rounds. I went with everything in rounds as much as possible. I love how this turned out. I added crystals to this kit because I wanted to see how crystals would look on a Jaded Gem Shop kit. It also is a very confetti heavy canvas, uh, as most Jaded Gem Shop kits are. Uh, if you've ever worked on a Jaded Gem Shop kit, you should know that they do come out with a lot of confetti. And that's just the way she renders. And a lot of it, when you look, you're like, okay, that's so much random confetti. But when you step back and look at it, it looks beautiful. So when I'm looking at it in person, close up, you're like, why do we have all of those random colors? That's like so unnecessary. But when you step back and look at it, like looking at it through the camera, I'm like, that looks good. That looks really good. So this is what I did for my Night Court November. This she is beautiful. I went with the painter because I paint myself and I just had to do the painter for that reasoning. And I went with the smallest size that she offered in rounds because I love my rounds. So given a choice between round or squares, I will choose rounds unless I really want a small, small version of a kit that she does not. And she only offers the smallest size in square. Then I'm like, do I want it small or do I want it round? And I'll kind of like hem and haw and hem and haw in debate but typically I go with the smallest size in rounds and this one was finish number 38 did I say the size 45 by 60 but loved this one again there were some symbols that I seemed to notice a trend where some of the symbols were hard to distinguish uh, and I had to turn off my light pad in order to see them once the light pad was off I could see them fine but I had to turn off the light pad and again it was like the clover the triangle the teardrop the square the spade and the circle so those ones with like the similar shape white symbol on a dark background that kind of seemed to blow out with a really dark background on a light symbol. So those ones were a little uh, harder to see. So I would save those symbols. I would either do those symbols first or I'd save those symbols to last as I worked on this kit. But she was beautiful. Loved her. Next up we have Cozy Mug by uh, Bella Art Diamonds. And this was my kit for a cup of coffee uh, event by Age Diamond Art. This is a 50 by 50. And this is by Natasha Mora is the artist for this one. I love how this one turned out. Like they rendered this beautifully to give that look of the light coming across. It like the rendering was perfect and on point for that. Like love it. Love how it turned out. And this was one. I have random cat hairs on this kit. Um, but I am very pleased. Again, random mochi hairs. Mochi's like fuzzing on my canvas. She doesn't normally fuzz on things. Uh, very pleased with how this turned out. Uh, it was a lot confetti, like a lot more confetti than I was expecting. There are 55 colors on this. I had like, there was an area over here where I mixed up a couple colors in the kit and I pulled part of the colors off and then the other part I just left them because I just was over it at that point because that was my last square to do and then I would have the finished canvas because I divided this into four sections and worked on started here 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 and then I did that last section and I was like I'm done I want to be done I'm over it uh because I was doing the last little bit and there was a lot of confetti in this and I'm not a confetti person I like my color blocking so this entire thing was like sheer confetti so at that point I was basically done I was like let me be done uh just because of the confetti but I loved working on it like I loved the image and the render was beautiful and it looks gorgeous like she turned out beyond beautifully like no issues with that that one was beautiful there and that one was finish did I say what number finish it was cozy mug number 39 oh it's going knocking my light okay and next up we have festive flamingo 
Festive Flamingo is finish number 45, and this is by Cat's Adorkable Doodles, and this is from Swartz Designs by Abigail Marie. Uh, this one I, I has a bunch of specials in it. I'm not going to go super in-depth with this because I just talked about this in my December month in review. This is from uh, Abigail's Winter Advent Box, uh, or her, yeah, the Winter Advent Mist like box there loved this super cute super fun I love my flamingos flamingos are like so much fun to do so and they're so so cute and so adorable and I was super happy when I opened this and saw a flamingo so this one is a I should see the size here it is a 50 by 50 and there was a like there was I loved it because there was so much color blocking here so much color blocking up top some color blocking here, here, and in this area, and some in the body of the flamingo, and uh, then you had some confetti. So confetti in the perimeter of everything, confetti down in here, and then the trees were some confetti. So it was nice to have that variety and that mix of both the confetti and the color blocking, which was a nice pleasure to work on for a little bit of both. Next up, we have, oh, these are backwards. Uh, we'll just do these this way. Finish number 47. This was my last finish of the year, uh, which is a square. And this is from Diamond Artisan Shop. It is a 42 by 60. And this is by the artist Alora Poutrap. Um, she's Oakita over on Instagram. And this is so fun. It's New Horizon. So fun. Love it. Loving these pastel vibes. There are some gorgeous ABs in here. I did add an additional AB, which you'll see in the post review for this, which will be up in like a week or two. I can't remember when I'm having it scheduled for, but I love this. Uh, they are uh, working on a new manufacturer uh, for this. This is from like the first run of these kits from the original manufacturer. So there is some, uh, there were a lot of drills with like the little tabs on them. So the gapping that I see in my canvas, a lot of it is because I got tired of pulling the little tabby drills off or I didn't notice there were tabby drills and I was like meh I don't feel like going back and pulling them off so when I wasn't paying attention like in this first section that I did I would just like leave it and be like eh, move on uh, when I did pay attention it looks like much much better in the section that I did down these two sections down here so this section and this section look much better uh, and then I just kind of like got sloppy and lazy on that section this was my last section that I did right here which actually looks pretty good so it was just my first section was like really bad when, as far as like me paying attention to drills and what drills I use. And the second section also not the greatest because uh, I'm looking at it and I'm seeing a lot of like the gappiness of the drills. So as I pull up, you can see where the tabby drills kind of are, where I needed to go through and like pull them off uh, or just place, not use those drills and use different ones. But I didn't pay attention. Uh, but that that's something that was part of... I think that's one of the reasons why she wanted to use a different manufacturer. So she source has a new manufacturer and you won't, you shouldn't see that same issue with the new manufacturer, but loved this art. I own all six pieces. I think it's six pieces that she's released by this artist because I love this art and everything that this particular artist, Aloro Pautra has. I love everything about it. Uh, and other than the, um, those tabs, I loved how much color blocking it was and how the lines are super vertical. So that makes me super happy. So that was finish number 47. And now we have finish number 46, which was my sword from Enablers Outpost and the artist is Indy Creates. And I added so many specials to this kit. You'll hear me talk about that in my post review, which is scheduled for, uh, next week for my post review, uh, for this one. But so many specials I wanted to have like golds and bronzes and everything for the browns to add more of the bling and then I added the background has a ton of ABs and a ton of pixie dust in the background colors throughout and all of like the blues and grays in the background it was already charted with a bunch of crystals so I didn't have to feel any to add more crystals because there's already three in here uh, up in the top section I did mix up like the blue in the purple the blue in the burgundy crystals right through here and I was like mm, yeah close enough we're leaving it I'm not picking them off because this was pure confetti like so much confetti I don't think it has ever taken me that long to do a round camp drill canvas like this is a 65 by 50 and it took me 29 hours and 37 minutes which is just unheard of 
for me. Like if we look at something else similar size, uh, like Talisman, which is a very similar size, took me 21 hours. And that's adding a ton of special drills as well. Whereas this one, for being a almost the same exact size, took me 29 hours and 37 minutes. So like eight hours longer for the extra added confetti in it. And that's doing it months later when I have like, I should be faster theoretically because I've been doing it longer. But she was a dream to work on. Like, like she rendered beautiful. I love her face. I mean, look how beautiful the face is. When you look at her up close, you kind of question some of these color choices, like with some of the like oranges and everything in here. But when you see it in a distance, it comes together pretty well. Uh, I, I still kind of question a little bit of some of this color right in here. But overall, she is beyond beautiful and it gives that texture for her face. So now we're going to go down to the floor and look at my last three canvases that were too big for my table. All right. So our last three kits, we have our finishes number 37, 36, and then 35. So a little bit backwards. So first off, we have Aphrodite and Aphrodite is from Bella Art Diamonds. And our artist for this one, ooh, as I go knocking everything all over the place, is going to be Effievescence. And this is a 60 by 70. She was a big one. So she's in a different storage, which is why she lays flat right now because these three are too big for me to showcase up on my table because they are big kits. But she turned out gorgeous. This is a round drill kit. Uh, absolutely beautiful. I love how she turned out. I was, this was one where you have to actually trust the process because I was very hesitant and nervous when I was working on her because I was worried about the skin color. I was like, how is this skin going to turn out? Because I felt like it was going to be too orangey. But in reality, like the skin turned out part of my feet. I have to be able to see what I'm doing and talking about. So see my slippers. So I was very worried about how the skin tones would turn out. But this was a perfect example of trusting the process. And she turned out beautiful. Uh, I still like the brightness of the reflection on her arm to me is a little odd but when you look at the original art it actually does line up with the original art so that's something that actually does match original artwork but that was finish number 37 now we're going to go ahead and look at finish number 36 finish number 36 we have flower delivery version number one uh and this because i did do the flower delivery comparison series uh, this is a 55.8 by 80.7. It is by Yume, uh, as is Flower Delivery version 2 behind it. Uh, I worked on both of these two kits simultaneously. And this one, as you can see, like, it was beautiful. I enjoyed doing both of them. There were small things that I went through that I did not enjoy about it. Small things as far as the render. But overall, absolutely beautiful. No, like... I went very, very in depth on these canvases, so I'm not going to do that in here because if you want to know about those, I have an entire series uh, devoted to the comparison between version one and version two. So we are going to go ahead and pull this one up and you can see flower delivery uh, version number two, also by You May Art. This one is a 70 by 102. Both of these were actually in squares. And these are, this one right here is the largest kit that I have completed. It is massive. <laughs> it is huge. I'm working on one that is 70 by 98. And it's a big one, but it does not feel nearly as large as this one. Um, so being that 70 by 102, absolutely massive. Beautiful though, it actually was less confetti working on this one here than it was working on version one over there. Um, but absolutely gorgeous fun to work on and a blast like it took me quite a while to finish it because this kit was so massive and both working on both of them together it took me a very long time to finish the comparison series but anyways those are my finishes for 2023 as you can see those were my 47 completions that I had for 2023. So I hope you enjoyed those. I will give you my final stats for companies that I have worked on. So I had the most companies that I did. I had 18 completions from Diamond Art Club. I had 14 completions from Amazon because I did start with a lot of Amazon kits. I had two completions from Bella Art Diamonds. I had uh, two completions from Enablers Outpost, two Jaded Gem Shops, two Sparkle Queen Creations. 
and then one craft ease, one DIY moon shop, one uh, diamond dots, uh, one dreamer designs. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, one Mooney made, one Swartz designs, and one Timu kit. And that is what I had. I think the math works out from that. I think I forgot to put uh, German designs on here from Matt. So my math might be off by one on this. So I may have to do my calculations. So it may be one less when we're talking about the Amazon kits. I don't know. But basically, that's the lowdown of what I actually did completion-wise. So I had a lot of different shops. So if we're counting the shops that I shopped from and did completions from this year, I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different shops. So I did artwork and completed kits from 14 different shops this year, which is a lot. That's huge. So we will see how many, because I have more than that in my stash, so we will see how many I complete from different shops this next year. And I would like to have just as much variety and try to get like more of an even uh, keel and try out, like I have a lot more shops in my hoard that I wanna do artwork from. And I wanna be able to get more completions from those different shops in on uh, this new year coming up and work on more of my hoard and not purchase as nearly as much. So we will see what 2024 brings. Uh, and I also have plenty of new plans for you guys, but this was just to kind of show you the hoard. The video is already going to be ridiculously long. So we will kind of just go over to the closeout and see going from there. But anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and you guys enjoyed this video. These are one of my favorite videos to do and enjoy it. And hopefully you stayed and hung out for this long to see all of the details for it. But anyways, that is all I had for you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.